Hi, I'm Adam. Hi, I'm Carly. And welcome back to the top. So, what do you remember about, you know, any kind of uh, anatomy that you learned in school? Well, honestly, I don't think I really learned full anatomy until I was in college, and I was a biology major. I never learned about what the true anatomy of the clitoris looks like. I didn't know what Skene's glands were until I was out of college. Like, I didn't even know that that was a part of anatomy for females. So it wasn't until I was, whatever, a freshman in college that my teacher said, you should go home and look at yourself. Like, use a mirror and look at your own anatomy. Your, your personal anatomy is going to look different than what you read about in a book. Yeah. And then I was like, Things are cool! Like, what the heck? Things are all... Like, I just was so mind-blowing that that was there, and I never knew. As far as, like, high school, any kind of formal sexual education, I was a business major in college. I, all I remember, it's kind of juvenile, but I just remember that thinking saying fallopian tubes was a lot of fun. <laughs> fallopian tubes. It is fun to yeah, say. <laughs> that's a fun word. So, Adam, what are some common misconceptions about male genitalia? Uh, you know, well, I think one of the biggest ones is just what the average size is. I mean, most people think that average is six or seven inches, but in reality it's a lot closer to five and a half. And so people think that, you know, they're really you know, below average if they have technically an average penis. I read somewhere that the length of a Sharpie is about the length of an average penis. Yeah, you know, that sounds about right. So Carly, same question right back at you. What do you think is one of the biggest misconceptions about female anatomy? The most common is that there's kind of a cookie cutter female genitalia. It's just really not that way. Like, it, vaginas come in all shapes and sizes, and um, I think a lot of girls are really self-conscious because they think that they look not normal, but really there's no norm to how a vagina is supposed to look or feel or whatever. Part of it too is that female masturbation is still so taboo. Yeah. And way more than male masturbation, I would say. So females are not masturbating and feeling what feels good for them. Guys will talk about masturbation a lot, but you don't hear women having the same conversations. When you look at statistics, it's almost even as yeah. far as men and women who self-report um, at least haven't tried masturbating. But I think if you were to, you know, be in a non-anonymous survey, I think that number would be much lower for women because there is, like you said, there's that shame almost uh, that's associated with you know, female masturbation. That's right. Let's become the masturbation nation. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain the difference between sex and gender? I guess the way that I've always uh, thought about the two is that sex is more of a biological term. You know, what uh, parts uh, do you have? And gender is more about expression, and it's in the mind uh, of what do I identify as? What am I projecting out into the world as far as what gender I want to be seen as? And that's kind of how I uh, separate the two because they are separate. Just because yeah. you are biologically a male doesn't mean you have to identify by or identify as a male. Right. One of the coolest things that happened to me recently was um, I had a friend who was pregnant, and she was saying that they were going to find out the gender of the baby. And then another one of my friends swooped in and said, "You know, this is a a little thing, but just know that you're going to find out the sex of yeah. your baby and not the gender. And it's just such a norm for us to do things like that where." it's hard to differentiate because, again, it's a societal problem. I've heard of gender reveal parties, but I've never heard of sex, sex reveal. reveal parties. And really, that's what it is. It's the sex of the baby. Yeah. It's not the gender of the baby that you're finding out. What's one last thought about male anatomy that you want to share? Uh, have regular orgasms, especially so for, for men. You. Especially it's true. For men. It lowers your in chances of prostate, prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Yeah. Just keep everything running smooth. Blow out those pipes. <laughs> if you have any more questions or suggestions on what you want us to address in the future, feel free to reach out to us. Carly's going to give you the deeds. You can find us on Twitter or on our Facebook page or on Google Plus, and you can also shoot us an email at ask at letshavethetalk.com. We'll be checking those very frequently.